Delighted to be here. Thanks to the organizers for having me here. Um, basically, a couple of points. I think we are able to pick up a couple of points and basically use them back at work. I think we are sorted for having uh, you know, come all the way uh, in Bangalore on a Saturday morning. Super. So, if I were to look at automation, here are a few observations of mine. Right? To start with, uh, you know, there's, uh, so my company is into, I mean, uh, I'm just transitioning now. So urban Piper is into automation of restaurants. Right? So one of the things that we learned when we entered the UK market was that uh, you know, in the Indian context, when we talk to clients, it's a B2B restaurant automation platform. When you speak to clients, it's typically about, hey, can you add this workflow? Can you put this approval chain? Right? Can you uh, give us something else? An Excel report. Right? So all this basically talks to us about uh, automating workflows, right? Uh, human power is never an issue. Manpower is never an issue, right? When we talk to Indian customers. And when we went to the UK market, we found that it's a very different product that they are looking for. They were looking for a product that would integrate with printers that are being, uh, you know, put upside down in kitchens. So we said, I mean, why would you hang a printer upside down and want us to configure printing with a large logo with a large font and their answer was uh, well our restaurant is typically managed by two of us right so there's a dad and mom a pop and mom kind of uh, thing and they said so we said okay nobody else they said no so one of us is the chef and uh, cashier and everything else in the next shift the other person is playing that role so that's when we realized uh, automation is largely to reduce workforce in other contexts, while in India, our customers are typically looking at automating workflows, right? So they were happy with having people who would, uh, you know, probably stand there, wait for the swiggy guy to come. So there'll be a guy who will pick up the chip, run over to the kitchen with the KOT. That guy will say it, pass it on to some other guy who will again scurry around the restaurant, etc. So I think the the paradigm of automation is uh, pretty much different. Yeah, you want me to use a different one? Am I still audible or is that a way of telling enough? No, it's audible. Uh, right, so, if, so I think automation in contexts are very context specific. Automation in countries where population is lesser is very different from automation in countries where uh, we don't have the problem. Um, look at the entire NFC thing in, uh, on our highways. Right? What was the original intent? You stick an NFC sticker you update it on your bank account and then you fly through the toll gate. Right? So today we have NFC stickers are there on all vehicles. Then you have a cashier and a clerk there. What if in case the guy doesn't have an NFC sticker or the sticker doesn't work? Okay. And then to stay, take care of the cashier, uh, to supervise all these cashiers, you have a supervisor there. Then to protect all these supervisors, you have five security guards. Because you know some people don't want to pay and then they show their muscle. Power there instead of money power. And so what used to what was what is otherwise called an automation in other countries where um, you know adherence to some level of discipline, concern for order, etc. is higher, versus automation in India, automation seems to actually create more jobs. So I, I think there is uh, it is slightly a different perspective uh, you know of what we expect and what actually happens. With more and more automation, I think what's also coming up is we had internet of things, right? We had uh, intelligent fridges which would figure out whether you need to order more milk or eggs and probably send a message to your grocery store and they... I think what's actually going to go beyond is connected intelligence. So it's actually intelligence of things, not internet of things, right? So uh, there are going to be probably, uh, you know, your fridges are talking to each other. Uh, each other's fridge in, in, in your apartment complex, right? So uh, they are all going to be talking about, hey, you know, uh, and, and then there are going to be uh, trends coming out where people are actually able to say, hey, on this particular day, uh, every year there is more consumption of uh, whatever, uh, mustard sauce, right? And hence, is there a backward integration? So basically, if you're looking at all of any of automation, it doesn't stop at automation. Automation actually gets into data which gets into insights and then there's got to be action. And that action typically gets into what we look at 
as four things for human survival. Right? One is effort. It reduces human effort, or at least puts human effort where it's required. The second is efficiency. It helps humans be more efficient. The third is effectiveness, and the fourth is impact. Right? By the time things go to impact, there's usually another way when things go away. So I think that's a, that's a far uh, call. However, if you look at these three things of what actually it does to human existence, it's around save human life, sustain human life, and skyrocket human life. So if you're looking at saving human life, we're going to have automation. Uh, you know, uh, like on, on, on Mysore Road, there was a very interesting WhatsApp forward, I don't know if you all saw it. Uh, there was an intelligent guy who said, okay, there are cameras here, so I can see the cameras, I have eagle eyes, so I'm going to slow down where the cameras are there, on the new Mysore highway. So he slowed down, so he was at 60 kilometers per hour and he crossed the camera and then he saw the other and then he sped to 140, 150 whatever and then again he saw the camera there. Again he slowed down. Okay, but when he went to the next toll, he was charged 1000 rupees for over speeding. Alright, and uh, I think that's a... And then the toll attendant told him, hey you know it doesn't matter how slow or fast you are at the camera, what we are looking at is the time you took between the cameras. Right? <laughs> and if you've been acting smart, we are, uh, you know, super smart, right? So cameras rocked, uncle shot, okay? So, um, so that's, uh, that's one thing, right? So the first is to save and sustain life. The second is to actually uh, skyrocket life, right? And with skyrocketing, we've been seeing all the startups and the kind of payouts that are happening and the ESOPs and all that. There's, there's going to be a significant uh, wage polarization and uh, Inequity of salaries, and that's come to stay, right? So there are going to be, let's say, two or three percent of the population who mastered skills uh, that are into deep automation, deep tech, um, building out all this automation and making sense out of it and creating stuff. And then there are those who don't have those skills, and there is going to be a very massive wage polarization, which I think will be sorted by some level of uh, subsistence wage for across the population. Uh, which is probably uh, something that we can all expect. Uh, we, we actually went through a small little phase of this when we went through the COVID lockdowns, where there were providers and there were creators. Right? Folks who sat at home, who did the intellectual work of creating something, software, tech, even figuring out uh, vaccines. And then there were the providers who have the feet on street, who ensured that you got your vegetables, who, who ensured your trucks kept running and so on. And I think this uh, contrasting is only going to uh, be a very interesting trend to uh, look at in the years that uh, come out, along with the wage polarization. So if we are uh, aware of this, I think we know where to pitch our career for the next 10-15 uh, years. And uh, otherwise, yeah, we just uh, ride the wave. I think I'm pretty much done with whatever I wanted to share. Uh, thank you so much.